Majority of the parts are Ultra 4 components, 35 spine axles, the diffs built into the bulkhead. There's so much space in here, dude. This is quite a beast, if I must say. All right, guys, so we are back with this infamous F-150. Kirby is going to tell us the story of this thing. Um, for those of you that were at the Off-Road Expo, some people noticed. Some people kind of walked by, didn't know. Other people crawled under and were pretty stoked about this thing. This is going to be a really, really rad truck. Kirby's going to tell you all about it. But before he does, he's going to tell you the history about it. So, Kirby, tell us about this thing. What, what makes this thing special? Where'd you get it? What's the origin story? Origin story is the Murray Brothers, who are sponsored by Can-Am, this factory Can-Am team. He has a dealer license. So we went to an auction and we got the F-150 at the auction. Same thing, didn't had minimal damage. Then I built the front end for it. So it had a, probably I think 18 inches of travel front kit that I put on it. It had leaf springs in the rear, notched the frame, yep. caged it, and then we pre-ran with it. You had like two gas tanks on that, right? Like the stock and then, I remember that. We did for a while, we had the stock one, then I finally put a, uh, a fuel cell in it. Yeah, because of how far you were going. Yeah, so yeah. we would we would pre-run the thousand, we pre-run the five hundred, we pre-run Parker. I mean, everywhere we could pre-run and everywhere we were racing. So yeah. like, so so was, so the front end you built pretty similar to like a I don't know like an H and M kit or like yeah. a Camber kit. Yeah, it was like probably that. six over, like probably like ninety one inches wide. Yeah, eighteen inches of travel. Yeah, uh, full cage, front to rear, and it was more of a chase truck. Like, yeah. So you just kind of put this thing away or what happened? No, we got to the point where we were racing the Ultra 4 more, we were racing the Class 1 more, or I raced with Shannon Campbell or whoever I'd be racing with, but it got to the point where it wasn't yeah. anything close to what we were racing. So it was like, it just got- It was too the, far away. Yeah, it got yeah. put on the back burner and then it went and parked at my buddy's yard for probably 10 years it just sat. Wow. And then- That's wild, dude. Yeah. It's wild, yeah. It's just kind of what happens. And then during COVID, I had- or during COVID, I was having huge back problems. So I had my spine fused. Damn. And right after that, basically rehab, we cut it in half and started working on it. Yeah. So this part-time build yeah. ever since then. During COVID, we were able to have a couple like private, private events for a, a few hundred of our friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and Kirby came out with his family and, and uh, kind of, seeing us play around a little we had a good time and it was cool to kind of like see kirby around pre-runners again you know knowing that that's how i met him and stuff and then you know when he had shared his plans about wanting to build this a certain way how we're going to get into it just kind of blew my mind so pretty cool so what's the concept now are we going to just dive into it yeah so the concept was i had my truck i had a bunch of timed out ultra four parts so like we have two or three extra transfer cases i have 10 sets of stubs, axles, inners, outers, the bearings, everything. Greg Adler with ORW, he wanted to put portals on his Ultra 4, so we cut it in half, redid the whole entire thing. So then I had a bunch of extra parts that were never gonna fit anything. Like everything that's being built now is bigger, stronger, badder. It's crazy. Yeah, it's all 40 spline. The front of this is 35 spline, but we've never broke a 35 spline stub axle yeah. with 900 horsepower in Ultra 4. I mean, people can do it, but we just haven't. So I had all these parts and I wanted to, to rebuild this old girl. So oh, yeah. we did. And then I had time and I wanted to do it just different. So we did. officially started this thing, designing and everything. Uh, what timeline are we at right now? I cut it up like in the middle of COVID and right. then I had surgery and then right after that is when we started actually doing all the tube work. Right on, yeah, I remember like sharing, you sharing some design stuff and being pretty cool. Really yeah, fun. I built the bulkhead on the bench and I had the bulkhead done before I even brought the truck in to the, into, the, into the shop. So right the on. whole bulkhead was ready to go and then I had to figure out how I was gonna make it actually attached to the truck so sick all right guys well long long overdue let's let's get into this thing this is quite a beast if i must say 
So these are VFGs, they're 40s. We decided to put a four wheel drive front end on this thing. It uses the majority of the parts are ultra four components. So we have the 35 spine axles with the CVs, the diffs built into the bulkhead, custom made. So you designed that whole bulkhead entirely yeah, before whole entire even. thing that was designed with the winch mount, with the arm pickups, front and rear. Creating a, a bulkhead with a winch mount is probably pretty standard for you because you come from the Ultra 4 yeah, world. Yeah, just because of packaging in an Ultra 4, you're packaging a Class 1 and a trophy truck all in one vehicle. Wow. So. That's wild, dude. Yeah. Yeah, a, a, lot of pre, a lot of pre-runners, I would say, don't really have that in mind too much. No. At least from our world. A lot know? of cars... The tubes get thrown, the tubes get made, they get put where they get put, and yeah. then you have to worry about sheet or paneling it and, and making it look correct once you're done. I tried to make this thing and put the tubes exactly where they need to be yeah. from the get-go, and I had plenty of time to do it, so I was able to make, like, basically every tube makes sense. So once you got this laid out, um, you started piecing it together? Yeah, so built the whole entire bulkhead on a, on a workbench, and then got all the geometry correct, and then figure out how to put it onto the actual vehicle. Man, look at this thing, dude. It's beautiful. It's straight up like an so, RC car. This, I mean, even the tubing on this is huge. So I went strong with the tubing. So it's not a J arm and it's technically not an A arm. So I guess it would be an A arm so they can call it whatever they want. Yeah. But I put the coil over on the inside to say for, all for packaging. So I needed this all to fit with four wheel drive, the steering, clearing everything, getting the big block out. Yeah. So that's why I put the cool. arm through right the there. center. Mm. And then that's why I put the coil over right over the axle. And then I used King's clevis mount to run the axle through the center of the shock, which most people don't. But I was able to pull it off and get the geometry to work. Holy crap. Is this how uh, Ultra 4s are set up? No, no other Ultra 4 except for Greg Athers has this as of right now. Wow. I have, I have that on his Ultra 4 too. That's wild, dude. What did the, our friends at King say about that? What do they think? They questioned me when I, was, when I told them what I was going to do, and Brett said, here, how about it? So <laughs> Brett gave me everything I needed and didn't think it would work. And then when I showed him that it worked, he was like, oh, okay, I guess we can throw that on the website. Dude, that is so crazy, dude. Wow, man. That is uses wow. Series 30 CVs on the outside. Wow, those ones are clamped on. Like okay. Super big, massive CVs on the outside. Nice, man. And then uh, tell us about this uh, real quick. I, I know we're kind of jumping around. Tell us about this wheel that you got and the offset and all that stuff. The front of the car got built based off the wheel. So uh, Raceline sponsors Greg, and I already was talking to Greg Mulkey before I even started my truck. Okay. And they told me they had a new forged super big offset. So this, I think, is a six-and-a-half-inch offset. So I wanted the big offset so we could get longer and and – a better geometry so with the longer arms you can pull more travel and what what's the purpose of everything kind of sitting in here it's like it's incredible dude i wanted everything inset that way when we're hit, when ultra fours hit rocks that's all you do is smash into rocks that's why the tie rod's so high that's why the front of this is angled mm. um, everything's super beefy yeah that's crazy yeah so it's really tucked in there to protect everything in a sense yeah so it's like rather have the tire go I mean, I'd um, rather have the wheel go than some damage to yeah, these components. Yeah, those are Raceline's forged wheels. So those, those forged wheels that Raceline have are ridiculously strong. We ran every single hammer's trail with a rim only on an Ultra 4. No way. Made it all the way to the pit, and the rim still could have been used. Bro. I was on the front of an Ultra 4, and we had no pits. We had no spare tires left. So. And, and you can't run a tire back there. Like had, in the, some of those sections, anyways. Like no, it's no like, way, there's no yeah, there's no, yeah. The tire. And there's no way that we were going to leave it there because we didn't have the helicopter pickup back in those days. Oh my now God. Now if you break that, just pick you up with the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. So. Must be nice. Right? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of thought, kind of just like you said, kind of off this wheel, off this offset to just translate into the rest of the build for it to flow. Yeah. We haven't talked about width or anything or travel, but. It doesn't look crazy wide, but it looks beefy as hell, dude. No, so we went 90 inches wide outside the tire, outside tire. Okay. Here's 89. I did that because all the trails in Mexico, all the trails wherever we go, they're super rutted. And I'm not trying to go 150 miles an hour. Yeah. I, I want to be able to go up. To, I want to be able to go to Rubicon, the Moab. I want to be able to run Fisher Mountain at the Hammers, go to all the Big Bear trails. Like, dude, in a sick-ass free runner, dude. You hear that? Those are like... 
It's got an airlock. Justin, those, hey, our, our fellow 4x4 friend, those, those are some serious, fun trails. Like, those are four wheel drive trails. Oh, yeah. Here, we're going to have a blast when it's done. Dude. I, this guy's just going to freaking just send it up all those things, man. So how much wheel travel are we talking on this so thing, Kirby? So it's got 22 in the front. Jeez. No bind whatsoever at 22. Jeez. Run us through everything over here. This motor is definitely not an LS. I've learned a few things. You have? You have? It's a little a, bit. What the hell is this? It's a big block Chevy. I put the ID Designs pulley and bracket system on it. Which What's ID Designs? Tell us about all that. ID Designs, they make... A bunch of components for Tisco trophy trucks. They do their own billet plate, all the mounts. Basically, I think almost every trophy truck or 6100 or anything that's racing in the desert usually uses ID design components. Nice. I, hands down, I think they're the best components off the shelf, ready to go. Oh, nice. Okay. But it's a 502 that's been uh, bored and stroked. Not, so it's got like 650 horse on pump gas. Nice. I wanted to go big block because with the LS motors, like, they're good. You can get a lot of horsepower of them, but this truck's heavy, and with four-wheel drive and twice the traction, mm. you, there's just no way. A big block's the only way to go. Right. I'll run this at 75% all day long, and I'll be running a LS at 110%. To, to make up for that. So, yeah. so you're thinking might as well, like, it's almost like having a detuned motor yeah, in a longevity sense. Longevity and torque with the four-wheel drive and the weight. Yeah, so. that's what's up, dude. Heck yeah. That's well thought out. And I see it's not pushed back super far. It seems to be like just right here. Yeah, I'm not a, a believer in pushing the motor back for balance. Okay. You, everyone's putting 100 gallons of fuel in the back and two spare tires and shock tuning, you everything. Can, you can shock tune these days with the technology that we have. You can make it work with the spring rate. So right. I so that's where it's at. Yeah, I want to be. I wanted the motor to be as far forward as I could and still package everything. That way, the interior has plenty of room, and I'm not. Keeps the integrity of the cab. Yeah, I want it to be easy to work on. Easy right. to work on was the, the, the name of the game on this truck. Yeah, I mean, as you guys see, this whole freaking thing comes apart up here. Like he said, this whole thing was built to be worked on anywhere. God forbid Mexico, but if it happens, it happens. Anything else up here? What's, all, what's this guy right here? We mounted the AC pump backwards just for packaging reasons. I wanted to have more room in the engine compartment to work on stuff because by the time you mount the power steering reservoir and all the lines you run out of room real quick yeah i didn't want to so i mounted this this way it runs off the water pump the same way it would run off yeah so it's just a, a different way of packaging it and it just made more sense for this for this truck ac dude you're fancy bro yeah. damn <laughs> i'm married with kids yeah. you, know, you, you put them in a hot truck see how long your life is right <laughs> you're like and we're going AC home, or going home. <laughs> yeah, exactly there's no ac in this thing heck yeah that's rad very cool I, I hope I have AC. We'll see. We'll see. Do you? Um, I I do not yet, but it's yeah. They will have an electric one soon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. Good to know. Look at this big beast right here. Yeah, Roy at Pro Am. He's a good friend of mine. He hooks me up. We got that off of one of Greg's old Pro Fours, and then Roy at Pro Am rebuilt it, and that's the trophy truck rack. That's a big rack. Oh. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I got a big rack. Do you like it, James? <laughs> this is beefy, bro. This is this is like this is a trophy truck rack. Holy crap! Yeah, this is amazing. I'm telling you guys that like, this the the scale of things. Kirby's a big dude. So as I'm pulling back with the camera, he's a tall dude. What are you six three? Yeah. Kirby's six three. These tires are forty inches. I look like a freaking nine year old standing next to this. We thing. went inch and a quarter Heinz on everything, just because of longevity. This truck's huge. It looks like an RC car. Yeah. Okay, tell me. Go ahead. Well, we went inch and a quarter Himes on the upper arms, on the steering, inner outers. That way, it's for longevity. I mean, you could get any Heim to work, but that one's going to last the whole entire season. And if you go smaller, it's just not. Yeah. And you're not going to be racing this thing. You're going to no. be pre-running, having a good time. Yep. So, you know, maintenance, keeping it dialed in. Keeping it all together and not worrying about it break. Exactly. I want to crash into a tree and then keep going. Jesus. I don't want you to do that, but I'm sure that either, I'm yeah. sure that tree would but be pretty I still screwed. Want to be able to keep going. Yeah, big old big old shocks up here. Tell yeah. us about this package from our boy Brett. Yeah, we went with the three O on the coilovers, and then we went with the four O's on the front, which is plenty. Should and these totally and cool. these are what twelve? Yeah, those are twelves. And we went with twelves. The diameter is so big; it's hard to tell. Like, yeah, 
<laughs> we're yeah. limited. The, the steering and the travel with the CVs limits the travel, so I didn't really need to go any bigger. Yeah, amazing, dude. What hubs do you have on this thing? So the front is the front. We're using Spider Tracks hubs. That's what pretty much the standard for Ultra Four. Um, that it uses a, a unibearing, and then they machine a billet 300M center section. They make their own stub axles, and this is what we've been running for the past 10 years in Ultra 4. I mean, now they're going to portals and they're doing some other stuff, but yeah. everyone in Ultra 4 is running spider tracks. They're a great company. Okay. So, wait, you don't have portals on this thing? No, this one doesn't have portals. portals this is on, just four wheel drive. Yep, four wheel oh, drive. Oh, por portals are like that weird alien technology that goes. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I got one of those. You can, I can show you how that works too. Sick. All right, man. Well, badass. Badass. And so, this is the way to go. Yep, that's for packaging. The the spider tracks setup is legit. All right. right. So I see some other um, rock crawler things over here. That's a temporary rock slider. I have a I have a, a box one that's going to go on, but okay. Yeah, like I said, I built this thing for going on trails. No, this is badass. That's what's up. No, so although, I mean, this is purpose. Well, no. So we take Greg's <laughs> luxury pre run to Mexico, where we pre run the hammers and the, the door. And this, the quarter panel gets destroyed every single time. Dude, I'm thinking this might be uh, yeah. This might be the way to go. It's it's the way to go. And I think it, this is what needs to happen. It's gonna have more support that goes up here. I just haven't done it yet. But but getting in and out of yeah. the truck makes life super easy. Oh, dude, that's rad. Going pointing at things, pointing at taco stands. Oh. <laughs> Take us through the inside. I'll go around. Dude, so, look at all this freaking space, all these activities. Yeah, so when we did the interior, I, I wanted to keep the cab as intact as possible. Like, I didn't want to just gut the whole entire thing. Okay. I had the cage done already. I wanted to use the lower frame because I needed the, the space underneath the cab for the transfer case. Should we peek at that real quick? Yeah, sure. Holy moly. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll spend some time down there. So, yeah, I made the center part of the tranny removable. That way, it's easier to work on. Most of those are not removable. Okay. I put the, this far, this tube as far forward as I could so I have as much room. And dude, yeah, just thinking of it all, huh? Yeah. I think you're tubes. so smart, huh, Kirby? Well, no. Damn. No. I just well, have, it's with the experience, dude. No, it just comes with. I, I put the tubes like, like I didn't put the motor in. Like I knew where the motor needed to be, kind of. Yeah. And then once I knew where the motor needed to be, that's when this tube and all the other tubes got put in. Like I didn't. Right. I built everything backwards. Right. So the tubes make sense. It looks super simple, but in order to get it to look super simple, getting it to look super simple takes a lot of work. Right. Right. Well, there it looks like a lot of space in here, man. It looks very, very roomy. I'm sure it's going to hey, be extremely comfortable. Come over here and sit in it. Bro, I'm going to look like I'm in a car seat, bro. It's built no, for you. I want you to sit in it. I'm a little jelly. Of this Isn't it easy to get in? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? The seats, the, thing, the seats all the way forward right now, but the seats all the way forward. Dude. Uh oh, don't get too comfortable in there. Dude. Uh, no. Nice. I'm oh, still, okay. I still have extra tubes to add, but not until I'm done. I wanted to, it'll be easier to work on it that way. Dude, there's so yeah, much space in here, dude. Do you feel like a little kid? I feel like a little kid in the car seat. And our friend Nick right here. Our, our, one of our shredditors. Oh, they used to play football. Six, five, and yeah, yeah. No, I made a lot of room. That's why. Have, yeah. you, ever, have you ever felt that little room? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> this seat looks a little different. Yeah, I got a back, like it fits, got yeah. a back seat of a razor for the kids. So we got razor seat. A razor seat, a rear, a rear bench seat. I have the, the regular seat too. Both of them are going to bolt in and out. So That's if I go to Mexico, it'll be a three seater with ice chests and everything. Yeah. And then real life, I'll have the kids and that. Well, this that is great, dude. Room. It looks very roomy. Yeah. A lot of headspace up there. If anybody's yeah. wearing a helmet or just some headsets or whatever. Heck yeah, man. Is this our friend Wes? That would be Wes. Hi, Wes. <laughs> you guys, Wes is our friend. He's awesome. I met Wes so long ago. Does amazing work. He's up in Yucca Valley. Yucca. Yep. Yucca Valley, he's been doing it for a long time. He doesn't even need to work on race cars anymore. You know what? But he loves it. Super passionate off-road guy. If you guys are from out there, Inland Empire, San Bernardino, Yucca Valley, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, hit up our boy Wes. Tell him, tell him that Kirby and, and James sent you. So let's step to the back of this thing, man. Um, trophy truck. Pretty wild. Yeah, the back of it's a trophy truck. 
It's got a 95 gallon fuel cell. The pumps are internal. I made the truck as wide as I possibly could, and I put all I put these tubes on the outside to protect the shocks. And then by doing that, like I made everything as far as I could to get the fuel cell as low as I could, and to have as much space as possible. So like in here, I have a bunch of room to where I need to put one one cooler, and the rest of it will be like utility space. Do you still go to like the um, the military surplus stores? Uh, we're not right now. Dude, Kirby turned me to that, dude. I went, uh, military surplus stores have like the most affordable, most durable freaking uh, storage containers yeah. ever. Cruise by a military surplus store. And you're G &J no, and, oh, and G&J is great. Oh, they have stuff there too? Yeah. G&J, uh, Inland Empire, awesome guys, legends. They have great stuff there too, but uh, yeah. Good, good, uh, good way to save some money um, for some uh, real, real well-built military grade storage yeah, containers yeah. you're right this is no no kidding this is really wide yeah. this is really wide so the um, fender goes to right here like it, it butts the, the fender goes right here the lights right here yeah. I, want, I want to use as much space as possible that's amazing that's well, why, well, why why have that like dead space no, no yeah point having, i have no dead space that's yeah. why I, utilize everything you don't see the cool sway bar there's no i don't have a cool sway bar yeah but there's a sway bar on the, on the housing and i did that just so i could have more room I don't think I asked you how much travel's in the front of it, but I guess we'll, we'll talk. It has 22. 22. The rear, yeah. you have to measure it. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to figure that out. A lot. Tell us about this shock package, man. The rear shock package, I put the four fives in the rear and then the three O coilovers. Uh, we got a 16s and these are 18s. Uh, I built the shock tower and everything out of the cab because I wanted to have as much room as I possibly could in the cab. Comfort. Like I said, it's a pre-runner. Yep. Big old shock, man. The batteries are mounted up here. There's going to be one on the other side. I just haven't mounted it. Easy to work on, out of the way. That's cool. I've never seen one right there. Yeah. The Very fender, cool. The fender comes out, and then it's not, not going to get hit by the tire. So, yeah. Easy to jump start. Hopefully, I won't have to do it too often. Right, right. You're going to have the window right here. Are you going to run any fans back here or anything? Or is I'm going to put a cooler up, up here tucked in. I'm going to probably leave it like an inch and a half off the cab. Okay. That'll be the, the, the tranny and the engine cooler. Uh, I've done that with multiple pre-runners and it works totally fine. And so you still have all that visibility. Yeah, I'll have the radiator in the front and then I won't have to worry about coolers up there, but I'll have a big cooler right there. Are you still a Rust-Oleum guy? Used to be, but now I'm a Steela guy. Now you're a Steela guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm a whatever doesn't have Rust guy. Okay, got it, got it. I remember, dude, Rust-Oleum, everything. Sanding chassis makes you hate water. Yep, yep. And Baja is full of salt water. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of space back here. I'm sure Kirby's going to utilize this whole dang thing. Overland, basically have a bed. Yeah, heck yeah. It might even get an overlanding tent. So for you pre-landers, yeah. it's going to be fun. There it is. On campus, you guys are top of the mountain. That's cool, man. Rear end. What's up with this thing? Rear end, two works, four-inch housing. There she is. Yep. It's got the sway bar built onto it, so it's out of the way. What do you mean by that? Oh, oh, built onto the, oh shoot, I've never seen that. What is that all about? We'll jack it up and then we'll, yeah. uh, I'll explain once you get it up. What the heck? Dude, sorry guys, obviously I'm, I'm easily amazed by things, but that is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give the credit to Jimmy Wetzel because he put it on Greg's pre-runner. And I got in Greg's pre-runner, and I was like, Greg, what did you do to this truck? It's amazing. And Greg said, I don't know. Jimmy did put a new sway bar on it. So then I went down and looked, and I was like, where is it? And you're like, this <laughs> thing works super good. So then I called Jimmy and asked him what he, how he did it. Man, that's so crazy. I did it. And there we go. Yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. It's five times the work to do that than to put on a normal sway bar. Oh, really? Because you buy the sway bar, you buy the arms. And you're done. And you put it on. Yeah. That was a pain in the ass. This was this was ultimate pain in the ass. It's like two inch, two fifty wall, forty one thirty. So just trying to find a bender that's strong enough to bend that. What the hell? Yeah. What did you do? Went to the Fab School and they helped me. I used their bender. That's what's up. Fab School coming in clutch. Well, all right, Kirby. I think it's I think it's time for uh for uh level two.
So that just happened. Took him about 10 minutes. RC car things? I, I don't even I don't even know what to say. Do you guys have a UDR? A UDR Traxxas UDR? If you do, then you know how to work on one of these. Purpose. Why? Utility. Like I've worked on so many luxury free runners and you name the race car and none of them are easy to work on. If you want to change this to two wheel drive, put a two wheel drive bulk on it, bulkhead on it and go run. If you want to change the four wheel drive, it makes it a lot easier. Packaging with the big block and changing the front diff. You get to pull the whole motor and do a bunch of stuff. You can like literally just lower the bulkhead a couple inches and then pull the whole entire front drive line off or you can pull the whole thing out. Yeah. Um, that lot, fast, lot of, that fast. That fast. I mean, Insane. Assuming I don't have the radiator and all that stuff, but that's all gonna be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 15 minutes with the radiator. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> it probably, you probably could do it in 15 minutes. The hard part was figuring out how to do it like strength-wise, packaging-wise, and have it still make sense. Right. I mean, like you said, uh, prepping, maintenance, everything, just, uh, it makes life so much easier. Yeah. I can only imagine. This is probably can, every prep guy's you can dream see to how work much on something room like that. Now to access anything that you want. Yeah. Had to make the oil pan to clear the front drive shaft. Okay. That was not fun. But we got plenty of room for exhaust on both sides. Yep. Most luxury pre runner, most pre runners in general are, are slacking on, on space. That's why I kept the frame rail, even though only a little bit of it is actually real. It's all tubed. From, yeah, yeah. Ideally, it's, it's got the a same tube. Place it's right. got a tube from here going all the way back, and you can see it because I left the, the tube exposed. Okay. So it's plated, but then this tube goes from here, the front pickup where the whole bulkhead bolts to, all the way to the rear pickup of the suspension. Mm. So it's really a tube. All, it's like an all tube chassis hiding in part of a stock frame, That's which crazy. was way more work, and I should have just cut the whole thing out, but. <laughs> Hindsight, were, hindsight being 2020. Yeah, you were there. Sometimes you just got to go with what you got. Well, that's amazing, man. A lot of pros to be able to do this, to have this type of setup. I mean, what, what's your plan with this design? Are you, are you, I mean, I, got, I, I hate I got, to ask you this, but are you, is there plans for more? Is there no, plans I got, for? I got like two guys interested in this. Um, I haven't figured out what cab they're contemplating. Okay. But now that I have the proof of concept and everything done, scanning it and getting it like reiterated isn't going to be a problem. The hard part's done. The hard, all, yeah, all the thinking's done. So all now, the now it's like literally scan it, figure out what you want to change a little bit, but there's really not much that ought to change. Yeah. So it looks like their ability to prep, pull, do all of that. I mean, again, this is probably every prep guy's dream. Yeah, well, yeah this whole part comes off too. We just didn't take it off. Yeah. So you don't have, you can pull this off and you can get the motor out without taking the bulkhead. So it can still just be on yeah, all fours. It's, it still comes out. Yeah. But this makes it, even easier. Yeah. I mean, super easy. right? And these are the tube connectors from Tube Works, which are way better than the standard ones. Okay. Got you there, Chase. Well, that's incredible, dude. You want to take us through that front end over there? Holy freaking moly, dude. So that's what just came off. It pulls 22 with the suspension on there. Like I said, that's maxed out steering, maxed out CV. Yeah. I can't get any more. That's how to go wider, but I didn't want to go wider. You want it to make sense for the yeah, trails, the pre-run. Yep. I mean, and you drive on streets in, in, in Baja. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm speechless, dude. I, I, they're I mean, still, like... They're still plating. Like, I'm going to do, like, beauty gussets here and there just to make it look pretty. But as far as functionality of it, it's 100%. The geometry is down. You're good to go. Yeah, the geometry, all the major stuff. So, like, I'll do gussets to make it stronger and whatnot. But. Heck, yeah. Amazing, dude. Freaking phenomenal. I didn't skimp on the tubing. This is inch and three quarter, uh, 188 wall. Same thing with the major structure underneath. It's all 4130. 316th plate, quarter inch plate on the bottom. And like I said, this is all inch and three quarter, 188, 316th. And these are the pucks that I had made so that none of the load is on the bolt. It all sits mm. on the recess. And then when you want to put it back up since it's tapered, it literally, you just lift up with the forklift and boom, put the bolts in and it's back on. These are the front motor mounts, but the truck's held in by a motor plate. Okay. So it can hang there and it's not going to go anywhere. Dang, man. I'm speechless. I don't even, it's, <laughs> I'm telling you, it literally looks like, I, I, and you have a little boy, Kirby, so you work on RC cars. You're an RC car guy. He thinks all this stuff's normal. He's like, Dad, when's it going to run? Yeah. I want to run. I'm like, yeah. it's coming. Dude. Yeah, let's go, dude. It's freaking amazing. Amazing.
Amazing, dude. So stoked. Cannot wait. You um, gotta got check out the underneath part. Did you guys tell me that yet? Let's go check out the underneath part. There it is. So I kept the frame, which gives me like an extra 10 inches of room for activities. Okay. Lots of room. Yeah. Well, lots of room now, but once I put a drive shaft that goes all the way to the front, that's going to take up space with the exhaust. But right. By having the frame rail, I was able to build this off. And this was all existing cage. Okay. That was already here. Okay. So then I tied it in and then made these all part of the cage. So like, this is all 316. So this is actually going to stop me from checking up my body. This tube, will, I'll make it stronger. Right. But it all is based off of the stock frame, which gives me more, more room. We're using an Atlas transfer case, which is an old one that we had from the Ultra 4 that won't work for the Ultra 4 anymore, but it'll work for this, no problem. Amazing. Got a 4080E built, all 300 parts in it. Who built that thing? Colhane did that one. I've had a lot of good luck with Colhane. Steve. Yep, he's a good guy. Great guy. I can break something and I can call him and he'll be like, bring it in and we'll fix it. And he just knows. He's just yeah, like, he's good. He's kind of like Brett where he just knows his, his product and everything he does so well. Yeah. And then we did the trailing arms different than a lot of people. The bottom plate, so these things just get destroyed. So I wanted it to be, it's like double thick. It's two layers of 120, then it's welded and then it's just. Damn. <laughs> Dang, if Justin. I had, if I had a tube down here, it would just get tacoed and destroyed. There'd be nothing left. We put the pivots in the rear at a 45 to get like an extra two inches of ground clearance. Nice, dude. And then the sway bar is right there. We made that sway bar just for packaging. I wanted more room up top on the chassis. Makes and, sense. And that sway bar setup works super good. Here, I'll go around the other side. This is so crazy, dude. This is, uh, it's, it's wild, man. Tube works, Pro-Am hubs. Roy hooked me up. Hell yeah. Roy Pro-Am. If you don't know Roy, that's your own problem, but Roy's an amazing guy. He's the dude, huh? He's good. Yeah, this way more set up. That way we don't have to have additional yeah, things. Yeah, a, a lot more room for everything with this way more set up. Yeah. Same thing with this tube. This tube is inch and three, or this is two inch, 250 wall. So this whole subframe is two inch, 250 wall because it's pivoting on a bunch. And I, I, I'll take the extra 10 pounds of weight to not worry about this thing bending or breaking, especially with the stuff I'm going to do to it. Right. So once we get it... Done, I'll take you to the hammers. <laughs> so well, there's a lot that's of what I was going to ask you. Like, well, what is this thing going to be capable of doing? I mean, pre-runner things, clearly. No, it'll do anything pre-runner. Like, it, it'll be a little bit slower in like the four foot whoops just because the front end. But... Well, dude, I mean, it's so either way, are you kidding me? It's, you know. There's a bunch of trails at the hammers that you have to have a four wheel drive to get to okay. that are amazing that aren't like sledgehammer. Yeah, stack. it's not like, crazy, I'm, it's enjoyable. I'm never gonna go do something stupid like that. Like, right. I don't need to be that guy. It'll go up top of Thunder, I bet you no problem. Which okay. still is a legit trail now. Yeah. This is crazy, dude. I don't even know what to say. Like, it, it truly is like the ultimate crossover. It's like a video game where like you get the car and the ultimate car like is level 10 on everything. Like, that's what this thing is. <laughs> it's like ultimate overlander, ultimate pre-runner, ultimate rock crawler. It's rad. You've always been like an older brother to me, man. I've always looked up to you. And this is just such a next level thing that I'm so stoked for you and on this journey, dude. You're, you're go it's great to see you come back to off-road and then come back with something so insane. Cannot wait to follow this build, you guys. We're going to be hanging out with this man. And Robbie, you're not, you're not suing me because you're my friend. <laughs> we are going to be hanging out with this guy uh, through the journey of this build. We're going to do a lot of updates with Kirby up until test day. Test day. One day. One day. I love that. I love that spirit. But this thing's come a long way uh, from it being a concept, like a, just like a, an idea to becoming this whole entire thing. So we're going to be with Kirby every step of the way. I hope you guys enjoy this journey. This is episode one of We Shall See How Many. Let's get it. Thank you, my boy. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you guys like what you guys see, do what you got to do. Support us. We love all y'all. Um, we're going to be putting about a, out a bunch of cool new content. We're going to release some moto episodes. We're going to release some drift episodes, but we will not interfere with your Thursday off-road episodes. Go to the store, support us. Upcoming events, we got Speed Metal coming back in May. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe this thing will be at Speed Metal somehow, some way. Later, guys. Uh, 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 uh,